Hello viewers, SuperGZ here. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. Now this one is going to be slightly different compared to your typical race, mainly because it's an oval race. Now oval racing isn't something I do all that much. It's not something that comes up all that often in Gran Turismo, but it's something different. It's something fresh, I suppose. And you know what? Um, this, this exact track came up once in the daily races in... Um, or maybe about a couple of months ago at least and it was actually really fun it was actually very enjoyable I think it was 10 laps back then uh, it's quite a short race people were using the Lancer Evo uh, maker but it was very enjoyable now you can see here we're going to go on board with a couple of different people throughout the race so of course myself you see here in the Lilac uh, Porsche 911 then we've got Quintin who is starting in 6th position He's in the Jaguar, and we've got Mr. Steve Gaming in the Lexus starting, I think, 12th, or a little bit further back compared to myself. So we're going to go on board with three different people throughout the course of the race, just see how it pans out for the three of us, basically. So we've got three different stories to kind of, kind of run with here and see how it goes. Now, over racing, of course, something very different. It's not something I'm particularly used to doing. Or, or do that often but you know what after after doing those races a couple of months ago around here and after what was one of my closest ever races in fact if you haven't seen it already uh, go on my channel uh, closest ever finish have a look it was absolutely insane the racing was really good um, but yeah the, the racing can be absolutely hard fought right to the final you know right to the line right to the line between not between like two people but between like 10 people like 10 people can win the race with a minute left to go and let's see if that's going to transpire here you might have just spotted halfway through that lap there was an orange car going very slowly um, I think that's someone getting a penalty unfortunately for him as uh, it's very early in the race I think the main thing one of the main things in this overall kind of racing is the slipstream we all know how just how strong the sucking forces are in the world of Gran Turismo and therefore the slipstream is, is just the, the most important thing on, the, on an oval race so if you if you lose the slipstream if you're out of range and, and can't get it back then you're almost certainly out of the race there's, there's not much you can do unless everyone crashes which is probably not going to happen let's face it may, but you may well be lucky and get a few positions of some people crashing it's unlikely that the entire 18 car pack is going to finish uh, is going to uh, crash and finish their race and let you overtake them from 19th so you kind of got to always stay within range and uh, do your best tactically it's always a tactical race this so keeping yourself within range in the right position at the right time minimizing risk if you're on the outside there's a chance you can get pinched against the wall things like that it's kind of got to minimize risk just be in a good position at the right time you can see there Quinton just up ahead in 4th, so he's fought his way up a little bit. I've fought my way up a little bit from 9th to 7th. And there's not too much point in really just fighting to get to the front like right now. There's not much point. In a normal race you might do that on a, on a circuit, on a, on a road circuit. But on the oval, there's not much, too much point. You kind of bide your time and uh, just, just make sure you're kind of near the front-ish. You don't want to again lose too much um, or you don't want to risk being in an accident or things like that and I, I think the, the more to the middle of the pack you are the more you risk being in an accident or potentially lo losing the toe so these are the main considerations as uh, briefly looking at Quintin who's looking for the move to the inside he's, he's up to second at this point still hanging here in seventh and it's going to get really nice and cosy here down the main straight as we're actually going to go three or four abreast, I think almost five. I'm going to make it five abreast here. As we go into the first turn, I think I'm going to think better of it. And again, play the long game. There's not much point in going for that move. Okay, I might have gone up into second, but um, I could easily just get overtaken again. And you can see just in the front there, this man in the Porsche trying to make a break for it. If these guys don't sort themselves out quickly, he's going to be. He's going to be out of range of the slipstream, and he could easily just win this race right now. So we've got to make sure that we don't fight too much and uh, work together. And I really liken 
this over kind of racing as the Ford just gets edged out into the wall. Um, so he's going to lose a lot of time as long as he's still in the group. Now I kind of, I kind of liken this oval racing to cycling. It's actually very, very, very similar in many respects. For those of you who watch cycling, like, like the Tour de France, that kind of uh, racing, you, you get these people in cycling, they go off on their own at the front, but they're in a disadvantage because they're not getting any, any slipstream or clean air. So it might not seem that obvious, but in cycling, you do want to be kind of in the slipstream behind someone else. You do save quite a bit of energy by doing that. But in this, in this case here, you just gain speed. So it's a little bit different, but the principles are kind of similar to cycling. And in, and in uh, a similar way as well, um, the group, or the peloton if you like, uh, the big group can kind of work together to go faster compared to someone on their own who can't really work with anyone. If you're on your own, you can't slipstream anyone, you can't get bump drafted by anyone. Whereas if you're in a group, you can push each other along a little bit and gain time that way. So there, there are definite, definite similarities and in oval racing this this just whole tactical element element just comes out so much more than it does in, in a typical road race I think because everything's so much more intricate on an oval you, you really are going for absolute perfection around the turns as much as possible think of the Indy 500 they're just threading the needle to the nearest millimetre through the turns whereas on a on a road course you're not quite going for that level of or you don't quite need that level of uh, perfection of course, every every t every sort of half a mile an hour matters on an oval. It's not always as crucial on the road. Of course, you, you still want to get, you still want to be as perfect as possible. As this man there with a the penalty, five second penalty for him, and he, he's going to drop right down the order. You can see his arrow. You might better see his arrow on the on the on the map there on the top right of the screen. He's just dropped right off the pack. And again, looking at that map, first to sixteenth is in this pack here, 1st to 16th, so 16th place, still in with a shout of winning, you never quite know what's going to happen, you can just fight your way through at the right at the right time, people could still have accidents, it's going to most most likely happen, people are going to crash at some point or get penalties as, we, or as we've already seen, so up the inside of Quinton, it's a good move, and it blocks him off on the way out, we're just going to move across into the slipstream of Mr mini maniac and then in turn Quinton behind me and now we actually have all three um, all three cars of the video in almost line of stern so you can see there myself in the in the lilac pink slash purple machine whatever colour it is or fuchsia depends on your on your fancy take your pick as um, De Heiser and I think Mini Maniac they're both peeling left to go into the pit lane so a little bit early, at the end of lap 10, they may well struggle towards the end of the race. They're looking for the undercut at this point. So the race going okay for me, I've worked my way up from 9th up to 3rd. That's not too bad. A really good position here, up ahead of Quinton in fact. So he is going to go for the move. You see there, he got the slipstream. But it's just, it's just not enough. As soon as you pull out, he's not getting any slipstream from anyone else. Whereas I am still getting a slipstream from Magic Mike. So that pass is always going to be hard to do, so he's going to have to bide his time for now. So we're in a good position here, myself and Quinton. Is anyone going to go to the left-hand side here? Yes, Magic Mike pulls in. Okay, so we're in second, still in that slipstream, and a couple of people are, are following me here. So this is where the race kind of gets a little bit split, as some people have gone in, uh, some haven't. So we'll see how it all pans out, I think, probably at the end of this lap, I think everyone will go in and uh, go in for their pit stops and by that point everyone should have done uh, should have got, got their pit stop out of the way so Mr Steve here just on the fringes of this uh, of this battle for the lead at this point and uh, driving the Lexus so it's, it's hard to say what is the best car for this circuit but uh, I've always thought that that Lancer in the lead is, is a very good solid car Quinton almost into the barrier as he enters the pit lane and this is the interesting part here because we spoke about pit stops as if they're mandatory but they're not and the, the no stop strategy is a definite viable option uh, it's very close very very close it's going to be close with that Mr Steve Gaming so he's decided to not go in I mean he could go in and this lap we'll see if he does but the, the no stop is definitely something that you could do and um, 
he can make it work. Let's see if he does manage to make it work. So we've got in second, who's just a little bit further ahead of this group, we're going to see him right now going through the first turn. That was the guy who started second, but then had a penalty, I think, on the second lap. So 2-2-2 two, two, two equals 6. And obviously not the right number for him. He's actually just died into the pit lane, so he's not going to be in this race, I don't think. So now, the attention turns to Mr. Steve Gaming in the lead. So he is currently 9.2 seconds ahead of where I am here. Maybe, let's say, 8 seconds ahead of this battle for the lead of this group. And there was contact there, just on the exit of the turn. I don't know, I don't think that guy just saw someone on his outside, tried to take the racing line and just pinch someone against the wall and actually they both fell victim to that move so the gap or sorry the group shrinks a little bit the, the group gets a little bit smaller lap by lap when you have these little incidents you can see it on the map there's maybe four or five people who just aren't in the group so they just don't really have a chance anymore there's still a good 14 people i think at this point who stand a chance of winning now as i said earlier with all the the cycling similarities um, we are now technically the peloton we need to work together to make sure that we don't get embarrassed by mr steve gaming in the lead who has decided to go all out on on one set of tires so yes we do want to fight for position but we don't want to lose so much time that that the guy in the lead you know just easily wins we can catch him up he's gonna He's going to go right to the wire, I think. Benin just pinched against the wall uh, with Mini Maniac there. So this is the thing we were talking about earlier with, with, when it comes to tactics and strategy. You want to put yourself in the right position at the right time. Sometimes going to the outside with a three abreast is not the right place to be. So just I, I've been playing it quite safe by sticking to the inside. And uh, you see here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mitchell and Quinton both fighting quite hard for that um, slipstream. And eventually Mitchell wins out and Quinton's just going to have to settle in behind. So a good battle here, currently in 6th position, De Heiser on the outside there. So 2 abreast, that's okay I think. When people go through through here 2 abreast, most people can, can kind of work it out between them. And there's not normally many accidents. So when you start going 3 abreast, it comes quite hard to manage. Typically I suppose because the guy on the inside can't really see the guy right on the far outside. So it makes it quite difficult. Going into turn 1 then. So uh, Mr. Mini made it a bit of contact with his fellow MR driver, but they both get through okay. So Quinton now looking for the, for the lead of this of the chasing pack, should we say, up behind the 4G team, which is good in a straight line, very good in a straight line. So it's, it's the ideal car to have at the front of the group, I suppose, to carry everyone along. So just getting hemmed in here, Steph to house cut on the outside, unfazed on the inside, and there was contact there with the house cat. Uh, we, we live to fight another day into ninth. So one one solid line forming up ahead. Actually, a couple of people just bailing out. So we're going to look for that move. The super really quick in a straight line. So it's quite difficult to go past. But late on the brakes, he's going to be able to hold it around the outside, keep the position, raising off the wall slightly. But still holding a ninth position. So we are almost approaching lap number 19. Not too many laps left to go. As uh, Quinton now is taken to the front of the group. He's taken over the pace setting duties from Magic Mike as we come through into the final turn. That gap is coming down. Just look at that 6.2. I'm 6.2 seconds off of the leader. Of the leader of this group, maybe only half a second. It's really that close. And uh, I'm right in the middle of this group actually. Probably not the best place to be. It might be worth trying to consider I'm trying to fight towards the front of this group now. As we, we, as we approach the final stages, I just smashed into the back of Mini Maniac there. Luckily for me, he didn't uh, completely lose control and he's, he's able to keep going. So no penalties, and uh, he didn't lose out too much, thankfully. So the gap coming down still, you can still monitor that number. Left-hand side of the screen, in the red box, 5.5 now. Let's see what that comes down to within a lap. So as we cross the line, we're going to monitor what that gap is. We can kind of gauge how much time we are gaining as we come up to the line with less than or just over five laps left to go. So the gap 5.2 as we crossed, which is, um, well, it's getting closer to the end. It's getting very much closer to the end. 
and just monitor what that gap comes down to. As it gets really quite feisty here, as I'm phased out of the slipstream, no one ahead of him, so he's not really going to have much speed down there. As I do kind of boost him a little bit as we come down towards the second to last turn and into the final one. Now, we've got five laps left to go after this. I'm just trying to count in my head there. So it was six laps at the beginning of this lap and now five laps left to go now. So on that lap there, it's gone down to now 4.7. We gained half a second on that lap. I'm not sure it's going to be enough, but um, it's almost an exponential thing because Mr. Steve Gaming, his tyres are going to be so worn out at this point. They're going to be ridiculously worn out. We got down to 4.5. I'm actually losing out here. I'm not in the slipstream. I'm going to have to tuck in down into 10th. And you can see the hard work being done at the front of this group. Quinton with the bump draft and Magic Mike. They're definitely pushing each other along here. This is the thing. Mr. Steve Gaming, he gets none of that. He gets no benefit from anyone else. No one bump drafting him. He can't slipstream anyone. As we come round onto the main straight, Quinton once again in, in prime position, I'd say here, to go for the race victory as long as we can catch up with the leader, Mr. Steve Gaming. That gap is coming down. But then again, so is the lap count. Is it going to be enough as we get towards the final and latter stages of the race? It's not going too well for me. The last couple of laps have gone quite badly, actually. I've gone from around about 8th, now down to 11th. It's not the direction I want to be travelling in. In terms of position, I need to be moving forwards, really, at this point of the race. But it's just not happening. Look at that tyre wear, bottom left of the screen. That front right and the rear right, they are absolutely dying. They are screaming in pain with the excessive torture being put through them as they go through each turn. So Quinton again with the bump draft into turn one. That gap is coming down, three laps left to go, or less than now. Mr. Steve Gaming well within sight. Here he is, just coming through the penalty zone. And uh, you see there's seven temps off his personal best. He really is losing a lot of time. I'm just three temps off my personal best, actually not the best first corner. As um, as we come through the second to last turn, in fact, as Quinty comes through, I'm, I'm not going through. Um, you see just how close that gap is coming down now. As Magic Mike, you can see as we look behind that is a scary sight as the big group of guys is coming to hunt you down. As we look behind, crossing the line, he's well within the slippery range now. I don't think Magic, I uh, don't think, sorry, I don't think um, Steve Game is going to stand a chance of surviving. And what's this? I've run out of fuel. I'm going to be running out of fuel. I haven't been monitoring my fuel situation. And I'm going to have to go to lean mode 6 and coast most of the way around. So I'm out of the running. I'm completely gone. Looking at the front though, Quinton's taken to the lead of the race. Can Mr. Steve Gaming stage some sort of miracle comeback right at the end here? His tyres are absolutely shot. You can see just how little grip he has as we come through the final turn. The 4 GT is going to be able to outpace him through that turn. And as I come round here, well, 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 the, um, the, we're going to have to do a big investigation here as to what exactly happened other than I was just a bit of an idiot and forgot to check my fuel. Uh, perhaps should have fueled a little bit uh, on that final lap, on, on that pit stop, sorry. But as we come up towards the end of the race, Quinton's in a really good position here. He's good half a second ahead of Magic Mike. So he only has to withstand one more corner, he's going to win. And this is Steve Gaming, he can't quite survive. He's off the throttle, in fact, going into the wall. He's, hold he's holding it up into eighth position, which I suppose isn't too bad. He was around about that same position when uh, we went in for that pit stop, so he's, he's made it kind of work. Obviously not to win, but he kind of leveled it off with where he was. Quinton winning the race. Mr. C Gaming coming through in the top 10. Good result, I'd say. And then I've actually run out of fuel completely here. And I'm going to roll across the line in 17th. A really disappointing finish after what was a really enjoyable race. It, was, it wasn't quite going my way towards the end anyway. Actually, Steve Gaming finishing 11th. He got a penalty there. That was a really enjoyable race, and over racing is actually very, very enjoyable. Uh, so hopefully, maybe a little bit more of it comes up at some point. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed the video. As always, let me know your thoughts. There are the results. You see a really disappointing finish going down to 17th. But ultimately, well, sometimes you win some, but most of the time you lose them. 
So there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Goodbye. Listen.